Josh Felber. You're watching Making Bank. One of the things that happens today when we, as entrepreneurs, we start a business, we have all these great ideas and dreams and thoughts of how our lifestyle is going to be, what's going to happen, all the vacations and free time and everything that we're going to have, but it doesn't happen. Reality sets in and we get, we become a slave to our business. And one of the things I want, that we want to talk about is how we can start to design our own lifestyle around our business, how we can start to determine what process and where we're going to go and actually stop becoming that, that slave and having that business, you know, working in that business where we can actually step out of that business, work on that business, and control the business to move forward to support our lifestyle and to support our vision and what we want to do. And one of the things, you know, that when we become a slave to our business that we miss out on is family time, you know, friends, you know, growing, education, you know, the parts that encompass who we are and that f and we lose the fun we lose that excitement that we had when we first were starting it and by designing the lifestyle we want we can then take those vacations spend the time with the family and help us move forward for me i started a company when i was one of the companies i did start when i was 19 years old uh, is in the merchant services business and I was in Dallas, Texas and you know and for me you know I was full force going in it I had a business partner and the company grew so quickly before you know it I was working over 80 hours a week and I thought man this is just the way you got to do it and this is you know how things have to be and you know putting in those you know 80 hours and you know every single week day in and day out you lose, you lose your whole lifestyle piece of it. You know, being able to travel, being able to go out, being able to spend that time, you know, with those friends. And for me, I was single and I was in Dallas and, you know, I just did not have that. You know, I was in my, tw um, you know, early 20s and it just, it was a big piece that I missed out on because I was so focused in the company. Now for me, I was fortunate. I was able to, you know, sell that company when I was 25 and do really well with that. But I lost out on a piece of my life that I'm, I'm never going to have back. And then, you know, down the road I invested that money and ended up losing it all anyways in the dot com crash. So <laughs> what was it all for? <laughs> Since it did not support my lifestyle. And so one of the things moving forward that I did for myself is, you know, at future businesses and things that I've started, I wanted to make sure, hey, how can this support my lifestyle? You know, how can this, you know, be able to give me that freedom and that time freedom to spend now with you know my kids and my wife and my wife's an entrepreneur as well and so between both of us you know it comes it becomes you know we have to make sure we schedule those times in I know you probably you may be feeling overwhelmed tired burned out and you just do not have that direction anymore you know you've either been in your business so long that it's just become natural to you or you're just starting your business and you're like, oh, that's not gonna happen to me, that's not gonna happen to me. Well, I want you to, if you're just starting your business, start to design your business around your lifestyle today. If you're in the business and you've been doing it for a while and you're that slave to the business, take those steps today to start taking back your life, your time, your freedom. And some of the key points um, that I have, we have, I have six key points that you can utilize to start making that happen. First one is find your vision. You know, you probably either when you first started your business, you had a vision uh, or you're just starting your business. Get your vision dialed in. Find what your massive purpose is. Why are you here? Why are you doing this? Number two is set lifestyle habits and goals. So many of us, you, you know, so, you know, we set goals for our business, where we want to financially be, but we never set our lifestyles and goals uh, and, ha and, and those success habits for that. And so what we want to do is make habits, you know, where do we want to go on vacation? What, 
what fun things that we want to do on the side, where we want to spend time with our kids, and make those activities and schedule them hard into your calendar. Do not let those wave. And you have to enjoy life. You have to get out and have fun. You know, as entrepreneurs, we get so busy, we lose that fun play perspective of what we have in business. So get out, play, have fun in what you're doing, as well as travel. You know, set, whether it's you go two hours away, four hours away, jump on a plane, go to another city, travel, get out of your current environment, meet some people, go to conferences, you know, uh, go to, you know, different events and things, you know, or just go to a beach somewhere and relax. Spend that quiet time by yourself uh, or with your family and really connect with those people. Strive to find balance. You know, you got to really find balance in your life. Like I mentioned earlier, I was working those 80 hours. The balance was way over to the one side. So it's never going to be perfect 50-50, but strive to find balance in your life. Uh, you know, so you have that personal time, so you have that fun time, as well as moving towards your lifestyle goals, as well as give back. You know, it's not just a monetary thing like, oh, how can I support this charity? But how can you give back? You know, for me, it's, you know, we're creating a foundation where we can help kids and mentor them as entrepreneurs. And, you know, for me, that's more of a time commitment and making sure and helping other kids, you know, as that's close to me with my family and raising them as entrepreneurs. So work on giving back. Next up, we're going to talk with Jefferson Santos, and we're excited to have him on. He's going to talk to you a little bit about designing lifestyle around your business. We'll be back. Josh Felber, you're watching Making Bank. I'm excited today. We actually have Jefferson Santos on the phone with me. And we were talking a little earlier about creating that lifestyle you want, you know, around your business. And Jefferson is the epitome of creating that lifestyle. He's come from nothing and created this massive business and success with himself and his family around. He grew up in Richardson, Texas with his mom and sister, uh, attended the Naval Academy and, played, and Texas Christian University and played football. Uh, he has possessed great entrepreneurial ambition for new startup businesses. By the age of 25, though, life had him in a chokehold. He was in the red. His, he was negative in his bank account and loads and loads of debt to the tune of over $70,000. And Jefferson realized at that moment he needed a change. And with a newfound commitment, he turned that decision into a reality by discovering higher life design. And over this time, has helped him earn over several million dollars and build a team of more than 300,000 leaders in over 30 different countries, countries in his business. And more importantly, Jefferson has been able to build schools in Guatemala, lead other projects to help those in despite of need and re resources. And through his volunteerism, he has invested his time and talent and treasures to those who need a hand up, not a hand down. Jefferson, I'm excited to have you on today, and welcome to Making Bank. Thanks, Josh. It's, uh, I'm excited as well, and uh, you know, it's always fun to be able to help people uh, design the life that they want. You know, definitely, Jefferson. And you know, ever since I met you, you know, you are happy. You're traveling. You know, you have kids, and you're you know, you know, beautiful, caring wife, and you know, you guys just have that ultimate lifestyle. And I know it wasn't always like that. And you know, maybe you can kind of explain to our audience a little bit about a little bit more detail, maybe on your background and what was going through your head and you know, what made that shift for you, and then, you know, and then we'll kind of get into later on, you know, with that path that you went down to start creating that lifestyle and what those pieces were that our listeners, our audience can actually take and utilize to design their own lifestyle. Sure, and, and first of all, thank you for having me on the show here, and uh, just grateful and honored that you invited me on, and, 
you know, I, I grew up in the Dallas, Texas area, Richardson to be exact, uh, with my mother and my and my sister. She was raising us, and uh, you know, she had three jobs, and uh, and I always heard her verbally profess that making money was hard. I mean, my mother worked really, really, really hard. My parents sure. were from Brazil. Uh, they divorced when I was four years old, and so as a little kid, I thought, you know, in my head, making money was hard. And so uh, <laughs> after I after I went to the Naval Academy at TCU, I got started. You know, 19 years ago as, as an entrepreneur in the business because I really got excited about making money because we didn't have any. <laughs> and, uh, and so the first thing in my head was making money's hard. <laughs> so I had to kind of, so I had that internal GPS program pretty, pretty, uh, pretty deep there. So I had to go, <laughs> had to go to a lot of seminars and trainings and listen to uh, MP3s and CDs and actually tapes back then. Sure. Yes, I oh, yeah. hate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, because I had to get that good stuff in the in, in my brain, and, and it took me literally almost ten years of pretty much doing everything wrong. You know. Um, wow. But I, you know, but for me, you know, for me, I always had this idea in my head as you know the the you know the world and the universe and the universe wants me to be successful. I just need to get with the program you know I, I i know there's other people successful i know that that other people are making it happen it's just not me yet so i never sure. had the you know the victim mentality i always let the future kind of pull me and like my good coach dan tolvin always says is you know take you know figure out what from the past gets to come with you you know what are the learning lessons from the past that you can use in the present to propel you into that that future that we create and and uh, so anyways but yeah, I mean, ten years struggling. Wow. Never made more than thirty thousand a year. Sure. Spent more than I made, but <laughs> you know, we always they always say you know, character is what you get when you don't get what you want. Right. <laughs> so those are like you know, ten, ten years of character building years for me, right? Yes. And that and that's what it, and that's what it was. But I met a lot of great people. Uh, I learned a lot of great stuff. But but if I may, I'll, I'll talk about kind of the turning point. Oh yeah, for sure. So. Um, it was 2004. It was January 23rd. I was in, um, in, a, in a seminar in New York. It was like a blizzard outside. And the, the seminar speaker was on stage, and, and they were holding their hands out, like two hands out and clenched fists, like you were holding the steering wheel really tight. And she was like, okay, everybody stand up and, and put your hands out like you're gripping the steering wheel really, really, really hard. And she goes, every one of you in here, you're trying to grip your business you're trying to control so much, you're you're losing it. You need to let go. And she right. just like opened both of her hands like like vigorously, and that just hit me like a ton of bricks because for me, you know, I'm a Type A personality. I wanted, I you know, I really didn't have a lot of stuff when I was growing up, obviously. So I wanted to control, you know, my future, you know, sure. and, yeah, and yeah. obviously, you know, tell God your plans and He'll kind of laugh at you or whatever, you know, like, yeah, or <laughs> if that's your thing or the universe, whatever. But that's where I was at. And so I turned the corner there because I realized that I was actually deep rooted in. I think I was actually afraid of success. Wow. And because I, I didn't know what was going to happen. Okay, what if I started making all this money? What was I, what kind of person was I going to be? Right. You know, was I going go to go to, to, you know, spend it on drugs and strip clubs and do stupid things <laughs> like some people out there do? For sure. Or was I actually going to be a good person? But one, one of the things in that summer I learned is there's a book out there called oh, God at Work. And I'm not, I'm not trying to push anything on anybody. I'm just, it's a really good book. And it was talking about there's people that are anointed to be priests and kings. And, you know, people can, priests can go preach on the stage. But there's these business people that are anointed to be kings in the marketplace. Everything they touch turns to gold. And it's like, it's just crazy. So I was like, you know what? Maybe, I've, you know, God put this desire in my heart to go make a bunch of money because I'm supposed to go do good things with it. Right. You know? And, and so, but at the same time, I, I was so uneducated and ignorant, ignorant about just all this personal development stuff. I was like, what am I going to do with this? Like, so that's what was happening is I didn't know how to, I guess, articulate why I wanted to be successful. I guess that's why I wasn't because if, if, if you don't have the target, I mean, you you're sure. going to end up nowhere. Right. Man, that's... You know? No, that's that's just an eye opener, you know, with what, you know, ten years of you know the character building and you know and just you know going through all those different pieces that you really had to start to before you would realize, you know, where you were and what was happening, you know, to take those next steps forward. So when we come back, 
you know, we'll get into a little bit more detail. I'm Josh Felbier. You're watching Making Bank. <laughs> Watching Making Bank, and I'm Josh Felber. We were speaking with Jefferson Santos. He was giving us, you know, the, what he has gone through, you know, to come to the realization of what he really wanted in life. And supple, some couple of the key points, Jefferson, I was really impressed with that you took advantage of at such a young age is coaching and mentorship. I mean, huge piece. So many people just don't, do not ever take that step of getting coaching and mentorship, as well as educating yourself. I mean, 10 years worth of, of a really great education, you know, even though it was hard and you were, you know, weren't making money yet, you know, you were educating yourself and preparing yourself for that next step of where things were going to take you. And that's what I want to kind of get into next is, you know, what, where did it, you know, where, where did we kind of go from, you know, leaving off and, and, and then those steps to moving forward, you know, what are those additional steps that you took, you know, so that in addition to the coaching and mentorship and uh, uh, education side of things that took you to that next level? Well, you know, I think that to, to, kind, of, to kind of jump off here with the education part is like, you know, with, with anything, with any tall tree, it's got to have deep roots. With any type, you know, tall skyscraper, it's got to have a deep foundation. And, sure. and I didn't know it at the time, but I was building that foundation. And so, you know, those of you that are listening right now, you know, hey, you, you might be in the foundation building years right now, you know, and and the longer you got to build that foundation, no matter how long it takes, um, you need, you need, because if you're building or your tree's going to be tall, you got to have those deep roots. And so, right. you know, now looking back, I see that. that that's, that's what it was for me. And, and the other thing, too, is if I would have quit any time along the way, I would not be where I'm at. You know, I had to go through that. You know, the only way through is through. And, uh, and so it was just crazy, but, you know, I had to, I had to really change my story. I mean, one of my chapters in, in my book, uh, that's, that's coming out is I talk about change your story. And, and one of my short stories here is, you know, when I went to the Naval Academy, one of the biggest things for, you know, for people in the United States, for young men, when they play college football is they want a bowl ring. Like when, <laughs> when, 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 when you win a championship, you want that big old, you know, bowl ring on your finger. Right. Uh, cause it's sign of victory, right? So, so I went to the Naval Academy. The year that I left the Naval Academy, they won a bowl game. <laughs> so I didn't get the ring, you know? And then, and then the year, so then I transferred to TCU, and that's where I played football with Ladini and Tomlinson. He's one of the top running backs in the NFL. Right. And now, oh, yeah. he, you know, he, now he's on the NFL network or whatever. And uh, so the year I left TCU, they won a bowl game. <laughs> It's just avoiding so I didn't you. Get that, I didn't get that <laughs> ring any, either, you know. Right. So my story in my head was, man, I'm a loser, you know. And junior high, I was part of losing football teams in high school. Uh, well, elementary school, junior high, high school, now college. And I had nothing to show for it. And so, but the other way I could have looked at it, and this is the way I look at it now because I changed my story, is I'm a foundation builder. You sure. know, I built the foundation. So the year that I left, guess what? They won a ball game. Right. And that's, a, and that's a different way of looking at it. And so there's things that happen in our life that we can change our story. And, no, that's and, awesome. and, and look at it from the other perspective, you know, because we, you know, it takes no talent to have a past. Everybody has, everybody has a past. Right. You got a past, I got a past, we all have a past. But it takes talent and diligence and hard work to have a future. And, you know, if we all want to have a bright future, we have to do like the name of the show, whatever it takes, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and that's what we have to do. And so, and so this book that I put together was basically 19 years of experience and mindsets and perspective, you know, almost over half a million dollars, over half a million dollars of personal development that I've invested in myself and skills that I, that I, you know, put in the book. And, and I, it's probably not, it, it's anyways, I'm excited about it. And I think that it's going to shorten a lot of people's learning curve, you know? No, and that's awesome, Jefferson, is, you know, it just that, you know, changing your story. I mean, that's excellent. And I think some people get hung up on where they are at and, oh, you know, 
I, you know, this is what happened to me and this is my past. And so uh, that's dictating my future. And you're, you know, you're saying, hey, look, you can change your story. I did it. I know you can too. And that's a huge takeaway for our audience. And, you know, I, you know, and I know you have a book coming out sometime in the next 45 days or so. And, you know, I'd love just to share some insights, you know, of that $500,000 in education that you're putting into it. I know I've spent that as well. <laughs> you know, and it's, and I, and just give our audience a little bit of that information of what they can take away and what they're looking forward to, you know, in higher life design. And so, uh, I'd, yeah, I'd love to hear that from you. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of them that I just shared was, you know, changing your story. Another one is, you know, you gotta, you gotta know your hunger, you know, show your hunger and grow your hunger. And that's one thing I talk about is you gotta know, like, a lot of people plateau. Right. And some of you might be li that are listening right now might be plateauing. And number one, you gotta know what your hunger is, know what your why, why what's your purpose, what, why are you doing certain things. And then you got to be able to be able to show that hunger and display and get into action, but you got to be able to grow your hunger too. Because if you don't grow your hunger, you're going to be complacent. You're going to you're not going to be able to, to 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 break through your plateau. And I think that you know if you're in a position of leadership, which I think all entrepreneurs are, any anybody that is is I mean that's that's what you have to be to be successful in today's world oh, and yeah, economy. You've sure. got to be a leader, and I don't care if it's a leader of one yourself <laughs> or leading a team of three or five hundred thousand, whatever. But in order for people to follow you, you have to move your feet. Yeah. If they got to follow in your footsteps, you have to move your feet. In order to move your feet, you have to grow. you got to grow your, your hunger because guess what? The world is moving. Everything's moving forward. And if you're not growing, you're actually moving backwards. Oh, yeah. Yep. Now, that's the truth. That's awesome, man, growing your hunger. It's huge. You know, and, uh, and there's so much more. I wish we had more time. But there's so much more to it. And... and you know, I, I want to be able to, you know, when I look at the life that I did have and now that the life that I have now, I mean, me and my wife take a, an exotic vacation somewhere around the world once a month. You know, sometimes we bring our kids, sometimes we don't. We have a one and a three-year-old, and we have, you know, we bring some help with us to bring the kids or whatever, and, you know, we, we want it to be fun for everyone. And, but, you know, it always hasn't been that way. You, know, you heard right. the story earlier about the struggle that we went through, but we designed it because we wanted it. You know, there's things that we need, but there's things that we want, and it's okay to want things. You know, that's what makes the world go around. You know, Steve Jobs, you know, what his, his, his why was that he wanted to go change the world. He wanted to get market share. He wanted to create the coolest products. But guess what? It, but the byproduct is he did change the world. I mean, the way For that sure. we yeah. use cell phones and technology and the way that things go. But So it's okay to want what you want. Don't feel guilty about it uh, because we're, we're in that. We're, we're part of whatever it takes. It's the show. Like, don't feel guilty about it. Keep on going after your passions and getting after it. That's awesome. I mean, you know, I think those are some great insights that, you know, you were able to share with our audience today is, you know, changing your story, you know, staying hungry, uh, you know, get, you know, ha finding that passion of really what, you know, that why, you know, of where you want to go with all this. And then, you know, and then designing, like you said, designing that lifestyle, you know, not, you know, I know people might be lit watching and they're like, oh, well, he's just lucky, you know, he just, you know, uh, can go on vacations all the time based on what he does, everything. But, you know, the great thing about it is you designed your lifestyle that way you've designed your future for your kids and your wife that way and so with you know with this is guys I want you to look at what you're doing today in your business look at what you're doing today in your personal life and start designing your life around what you want because so many of us become a slave to our business and we're never able to break free and we want to give you the tools to start being able to break free in your business. You know, go out, grab Higher Life Design by Jefferson Santos. It has, it's chocked full, over a half a million dollars worth of insight in there from Jefferson. So Jefferson, I was really excited and honored that you were able to be on the show today with us. I know you took some time out of your busy day and I'm really fortunate to have you here today and appreciate you with us. Yeah, you bet, you bet, and uh, I look forward to adding value to everybody. Go to you know, go to higher life, higherlifedesignbook.com, and I'm looking forward to serving each and every one of you on all the the free stuff I have out there, as well as the book at jeffersonsantos.com. I have a lot of free stuff for you, but yeah, I look forward to uh, in the future adding more value. And uh, it's been a pleasure, Josh. I mean, I've always uh, enjoyed ch chatting with you, and I know we're going to see each other here in a 
in a few weeks. It's going to be great, and uh, and we'll get to we'll get to talk to, talk about the future more. Awesome. Thanks everyone for watching Making Bank. I am Josh Felber. Making Bank is also available for download on iTunes and Stitcher.